Hi, everyone. Welcome into a Corn Husker conversation presented by Teammates Mentoring. I'm Jessica Cootie, and today we're sitting down with a Big Ten champion, Michaela Moore, fresh off of that title there in the Big Ten Indoor Championships. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Well, how was that uh, weekend for you? You competed in a multiple events, but to walk away with the title, how exciting was that for you? Yeah, I feel like I got a lot, a lot of goals achieved this weekend. Um, the first day didn't go as well as I was hoping. I took fourth in the long jump, but I knew that my stronger event was coming on Saturday. And so not letting myself get too down, being ready to bounce back and doing everything I put into training kind of came to fruition, which was really fun. You guys went in uh, for, on the men's side as a team, uh, one of the favorites still in a Big Ten title, and boy, after the jumps, you guys were, were right there. Um, how did you guys feel overall as a team leaving the indoor championships, finishing yeah. second? Yeah, there was definitely a lot of positives that came from the meet. I know none of us are necessarily excited or happy with second place because we really felt like we had the pieces and all the people to have won the whole thing. However, that's how track and field goes. Not everybody's going to have their best day on that day. And so I think just keeping our heads up high, we know that we still have those pieces and we feel like we're an even stronger team coming outdoors. What is that like now? Because you've not been a part of this program, but the, now that you're going into these competitions and you guys are expecting to win, and, and that's what the expectation is now. You won a Big Ten title last, last spring, but now that that's what, where it is, where it hasn't always been the mm -hmm. case. Yeah, there's a, I think there's a little additional pressure, but I wouldn't say that pressure is a bad thing. For mm -hmm. me, I know that that just means I have to focus more on what I'm doing so that I can help the team. And so I think everybody knows that they have their own objective, and that might be to get to place top eight. That might be to medal. That might be to win. But at the same time, we know all of our attributions contribute to that team title as well. So you do both long jump and triple jump. But take us through, because I was just asking you before we started recording, they're not really similar, even mm -hmm. though people might say, oh, they're both jumps, but they're pretty different. Yeah, they are. And so long jump is more, there's a lot of, it's a lot of, big speed component and you see a lot of people who are sprinters who can go long jump really far but you will not see a lot of sprinters going in triple jumping far because you have there's a lot more control a lot more balance stability and a lot of other factors that makes triple jump that much harder than long jump however and then also you have takeoff project trajectory and long jump you're going you're going out, triple jump, you're trying to stay flat and even. It's just a lot of moving pieces that makes them so different. So how do you, I mean, how do you balance that? How do you get better? How do you continue to, to get better and grow at both when they are so technically yeah. different? Yeah, so this year I've actually focused a lot more on triple jump, which is why I think I've started to see my triple jump excel a little bit more. I know a lot of people, they'll actually take off using different legs because it is so different and that actually helps them because they can focus on different takeoffs for different legs. For me, I use the same leg. However, just being able to kind of shut one off while I'm focusing on the other and thinking about rhythm, that's, that's a big thing as well, just rhythm of the run, rhythm of your approach. And my approach is actually different for both jumps. And I don't even take the same amount of steps, but just practice and dialing into that. There's so many, you know, I was watching last weekend and there's so many little things in the triple jump. It's like you have to hit the first board and then the second board and everything has to go right for you to hit a big jump, right? Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, there is three jumps. So yeah, three jumps. There triple, is. But I meant like mm -hmm. two boards yeah. before you take the jump. Yeah. And so you, sometimes you may not have the best first jump you want, but you can try and make it up in the second or the third, or you might have a bad second and you can make it up in the third. And so you may jump the same mark but it may look completely different. Hmm. You may have two completely different jumps. However, they're the same because there's just so many different pieces. So just being able to, like my coach always mentions, like don't try and do exactly what you did when you PR'd because just because you PR does not mean that you were doing everything efficiently huh. because you could do the same thing and it may not be as far or you could do something completely different and it'd be further. So it's interesting. It was cool watching both competitions with the long jump and the triple jump because there were a lot of Huskers that were in the competition and that had advanced to the finals. What is that like knowing that that group, you guys are competing against each other, but you probably also know that, hey, us as a group, we're a big part of this team and what the team wants to accomplish. Absolutely. 
I think that we enjoy all, I'd say every one of us are super competitive people and we're battling within ourselves just, just so that we can say, hey, I beat you on this day. And so <laughs> it's a lot of friendly competition outside of that. And I know each one of us wants the other to do better. And so if I don't win, I want one of them to win, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just building that team chemistry and making sure that we kind of reflect that onto the other, the other aspects of the team so that they can see what we're doing over there and carry that energy throughout the rest of the competition. So you said going into this year, you wanted to really focus on the triple jump. Why, why was that? What went into that decision to really hone in on that? Yeah, I think that last year I demonstrated that I had a lot of potential in it. I hit a pretty big jump last year at Baylor, and that kind of put me into a new category of triple jumping to where I was probably top 20 in the country, in the United States for that event. And so, and I didn't, and I wasn't practicing it all that much. And so it was like, huh. Maybe I focus on trying to get to nationals in one event first, and then we can work on my other one. And yeah. So you finished on top of the podium. Um, how rewarding was that, being that you did make that decision and you really put in the work on that, that event? Yeah, it was super rewarding. Uh, a lot of people don't see what goes into it. They don't see the 6 a.m. practices, the, the throwing up, the dying from the workouts, you know? And so I think that I, I know that. I don't know whether this is true or not, but I know that all of our guys here, we feel like we work the hardest, and um, it's kind of it's nice for that to pay off when we all finish on the podium. And I think that's a reflection of the work that we all put in during the off season. So when you you, you say you, you obviously practice makes better, and that's where you get better, but uh, you know how, what went into the significant growth that you've made in the last year? I think just listening to my coach and trying trying new things getting a feeling getting a rhythm and so it's more repetition and focusing on the little things so even when i'm going through warm-ups even when i'm stretching i'm thinking about having holding my foot a certain way i'm intentional with every piece of my training whether that's eating whether that's sleep whether that's taking care of my body i've done a lot better job taking care of my body and so i feel better at this point of the year than i ever have so I got to ask you about uh, the freshmen, the football guys that are, are doing both. And, and again, it just seemed like you guys had such a cool relationship, you know, how you guys were interacting throughout the competition. Uh, what have those guys been like, the addition of those guys to the, the jumpers? Yeah, so I think that the world hasn't really seen much of them yet. They're extremely talented. I think that they have so much potential and they, they already showed a little bit, but I, I think that's just scratching the surface of what they're really going to do considering they've been here since January. They've only been here a couple months, and I think this was one of their first meets actually jumping from a full approach and not a half approach, and so they're special, and they, they motivate me as well because I'm like, well, I want to do something that one day they have to chase, you know? I want something that, because I know that if I don't put a, a big mark on that uh, top 10 list, they're going to come get it, you know? <laughs> and so just, it also pushes me to be like, all right, guys, I'm going I'm to put out a mark. Here you go. you got four years to try and get it, you know. Of course, speaking of Jalen Lloyd and uh, Jeremiah Charles, how, how proud does it make you, too, the way that they stepped up? That was our first competing at a first, first time ever at the Big Ten Championships. But for them to, didn't win, but they provided points Absolutely. for the team. How proud did that make you to see them perform yeah, that, that way? That shows a lot of maturity, just to be able to get to a big stage like that and keep your composure. I mean, they're looking at a lot of other guys who have been at six, five championships before considering you have indoor outdoor and for them to not step down and be like hey i feel like i can compete with the best of them is special in itself so you're saying the future is bright with those two oh, guys absolutely did you see jeremiah come back the, on sunday and win the dunk contest at the basketball game yeah jeremiah also gave me a hard time he was talking smack the whole the whole meet long <laughs> even even though i was ahead of him he did not let the, he didn't let back and he said that the whole time he said that he, he's trying to beat me, you know, like, <laughs> and he made that clear, so he's I love He's a, a confident, competitive guy. Oh, yeah, I enjoy it, though. That's the type of energy that we all need in order to thrive. I'm sure you weren't surprised, then, to see him take the title of the dunk contest against the other football guys. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I saw a video earlier that weekend of him dunking, and I was like, oh, yeah, this isn't going to be much of a competition. <laughs> 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 the, way, the way he was jumping in those videos. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, you're a team captain this year. What does that mean to you to wear the C and to be one of the leaders of this track and field program? Yeah, being a captain is 
special and uh, a blessing in itself. I've actually been fortunate enough to be a captain. This is my fourth time, actually. Wow. And so since I've ever started competing, and so for the coaches and my teammates to see something in me before I ever even had the chance to compete was meaningful, and it makes me not want to let my teammates down and make sure that I'm doing everything that I can in order to help them achieve their best. What's gone into that for them to see you that way, to see you as that, in that leadership role? Yeah, I think just encouraging them, always being there for them. And for me, this is something that I take pride in, is just like always having a positive attitude. Um, I will never let something going on in my life reflect onto them. Um, if I'm struggling, if I'm having a hard time, if something's making me upset, I will never put that onto somebody else. And because that's contagious and you know, that's not their fault that something happened to you, right? And so making sure that you can still be a good person, still be kind, still be positive, even if you have your own things going on. You know, to be in that leadership role over the last few years and um, to, for this track and field program, again, I know there's a lot of history there, but to go from, you know, since I've been here, where you guys were winning a couple of years ago to where you are now, where you're ranked in the top in the country and there are, are these expectations. What's that like being a part of that and just seeing that growth to where you are as a team now? Mm -hmm. This is definitely something I didn't see our team ever getting to in my time here just because we've come so far so fast. I think that now I see the rankings come out and I see we're number eight. I'm like, dang, just eight? Like, <laughs> I, I'm almost offended sometimes. I'm like, we got all these different pieces and we're only eight, you know? So I think the standard has changed. The standard has grew a lot. We went from just trying to win as many individual titles as possible to that and a team title, you know? And now we're looking at here in the next, I'd say, I don't know, five years or so, they're going to be contending for a national title. And that's going to be the expectation is, yeah, we, we want to win conference too, but our focus is on the, the biggest goal there is, national title. It's awesome. I want to talk about your journey here, getting here. You're, take me back to your recruiting process. Why you, you thought that Nebraska was going to be the spot for you? Yeah, I'd say the main reason, well, actually, I'll take you back, back. Uh, so one day my coach, uh, Coach Chris in high school was like, hey, Nebraska gave us a call. Like, would you be interested if we gave them your information? And at the time I was like, Nebraska? Like, I'm not familiar with Nebraska. I know Nebraska for football. I don't know them for track and field. And so I was just like, okay, I'll give it a shot, whatever. So I got heavily recruited by Coach Wackerly and uh, he would call me all the time. He was very persistent. And so then I finally committed to coming on a visit. And that's when I met Coach Pepin and I learned about all his accolades, all the people he's coached, all the things that he's done here. And I knew that I wanted to work with an Olympic level coach because I saw what he started with. A lot of athletes, he showed me this list of pages of what kids came in jumping and what they left jumping. And that was really the big selling point for me. It was like, oh wow, this person was jumping two feet less than I was when they came in, and now they were a national champion. And so I, that's what really sold me. Hmm. So, you know, in this day and age, Coach Pepin leaves um, after he retires. What made you believe in the continuing on with this program? Because you just mentioned that was a big part of your decision to come here, and when he decides to retire, why did you want to stick it out and, and yeah. not go somewhere else? Yeah, there was definitely a lot of doubts at first because when you lose your coach, you're like, I have no idea who they're going to bring in. and I know I had conversations with Coach Pepin, and he was just like, the program will be in good hands. I know when Coach St. Clair took over, I had conversations with him about who would be the new jump coach, and, like, and he was like, I promise we're going to... He, he asked for my feedback. He was very open and very receptive to what I had to say and like what all of us jumpers were looking for in a coach, and he definitely took that into consideration when he picked his new coach. You got to love that out of a head coach that yeah. he does listen to the athletes and what you guys' needs are. Absolutely. It was, it made you feel important. And I knew that I felt like I would be in good hands and that he wouldn't. And I also know that Coach St. Clair has uh, those motives for a national title. So I know that he's not going to bring in somebody he doesn't think can get the team to that point. And so I was confident in, in who he would pick. And he would pick somebody that he felt like could help him contend for a national title in the up upcoming years. You know, another thing about you, beyond just what you do on the track, you are very involved in a lot of different things here on campus. Excellent student. You're involved in the community, do a lot of different things. Why has that been important for you to take advantage of the other opportunities that come along with being a student athlete? Yeah, I think just having a 
diverse perspective on life in general and I've partaken in all these different opportunities and it's given me so much different experience and so much knowledge that I can use in all aspects of my life which is why I find it really important to to try and explore every opportunity that comes my way. How do you balance it all? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I get this question a lot, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'd say the biggest thing is just being efficient with my time. And uh, I wake up really early. I get things done. I don't like to, ooh, actually, actually, this is a good one. Uh, when it comes to procrastinating, I procrastinate by doing other things that I know need to get done. Hmm. And so if I know that I have to write an essay in one day, but I also know I have something else to do, I might say, hey, instead of writing this essay right now, I'll do this other thing. So at least something's getting done and so that I'm always moving forward rather than getting nothing done, you know? I love that. So you've been able to do a lot of different things. What's been so far your favorite non-athlete experience, just one of the things that you've been involved in outside of sports here at Nebraska? Oh, uh, I would say being a part of the Chancellor Senior Honorary, that's been cool. I was part of that last year and now I'm an alumni because I'm a fifth year, but uh, I got to meet the chancellor and got pretty close with him and another group of 12 students around campus that I would have never had the opportunity to meet. And we partook in a lot of different volunteering opportunities across the state. And I just had so many fun things where we got to give back to the community with that group. And it, it was a really special group. What can you say about Nebraska and the, the ways that they provide things outside of being a, an athlete, but just the other opportunities, how they emphasize academics and the life skills and all the things that are, you guys are able to do beyond just being an athlete? Yeah, I would say that Nebraska just does a really good job preparing their, preparing their students and their student athletes in general. Uh, say when my coach left, it could have been really easy for me to say, Oh, I'm transferring because I don't have my coach here anymore. But this, that side alone, outside of sport, would, would have been something that was going to keep me here anyways because there was just so many opportunities, so many connections that I had built, a lot of networking that goes on within Nebraska that I knew would help me in my professional life after sport. Oh, that's incredible. Well, what is next? I mean, I know you, you're focusing on, on what you got to accomplish here this spring, but what is next for you? Yeah, so I do have another season of indoor eligibility, whether... I take it or not, I don't know. Decisions we will see. Here. We'll see. We will see. But I'm also applying to medical school this summer. And wow. I hope to start medical school in the fall of 2025. That would be my goal. Wow. Why, why medical school? What, what drives you for, to go, mm -hmm. go into that route? Yeah, so I think growing up, I realized, not growing up, more like when I was around in high school, I kind of realized that I never had a physician that ever looked like me. And I never saw an African-American physician as well. And so I really felt like there was a need for that space and somebody who's able to connect with uh, patients from all perspectives, you know. And I felt like that would be something that I could fulfill and something that I could mean a lot to my community by doing. Oh, that's amazing. Do you know what kind of, what area, what direction you want to go within the medical field? No. I, I mean, I, I know it's down the road. You probably have... Yeah. some time to make that decision. I know I change a lot. I, really, I originally thought radiology. However, in doing some shadowing in radiology, I came to find out I think I'm a little too social. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I could sit in a dark room and read at screens all day. I, uh, I like to talk. I like to communicate. So I've been thinking more along the lines of like pediatrics maybe or like sports medicine or so. Oh, wow. Well, um, You'll do big things, whatever whatever direction you, you decide to go. Well, up next for you guys, indoor national championships, which you have qualified for. How are you preparing? How are you going into that? What's the mindset mentality as you guys uh, go in and, and hope to compete and win a few national titles there? Yeah, my mindset at least is not doing anything crazy, right? Sticking to my plan, sticking to what we've been working on all year and consistency. That's a big thing. I know that if I can get out there and put out a big jump in the first two and secure a spot in finals, it's going to be dangerous. You know, I, uh, I put in the work. I think I still have a lot left on the table to showcase and just making sure that I give myself the opportunity in those later rounds to do that. And then also focusing on what I do well. Uh, I think a lot of people in track and field like to get to these meets and they're like, well, my start was bad. My, this is bad. But my thought process is, 
focus on what I do well, make sure that's going well first, and then everything else will work itself out. Because if you don't even get that right, then the whole thing is a mess. So um, yeah, just making sure that I do what I'm supposed to do and make sure that I hit my phases right, make sure that I'm hitting a, what I'm good at. You know. How much confidence are you taking into it, though, knowing that you know, you're just coming off that Big Ten title? Yeah, I think that was absolutely a confidence boost. I really, my coach asked me yesterday, he said, are you excited? And I was like, yeah, I'm mainly excited because I feel like I'm in the mix, you know. It's not like I just got there and I'm, I'm just happy to be there or I'm okay with getting last place. No, I feel like I really have a chance to contend with everybody else and it's going to be a good one. Well, best of luck. We'll look forward to it again. It's coming up this weekend, so we'll be following along. I, I can't let you get out of here without asking you about the outdoor season, too. I know you're focused on the indoor national championships, but again, with all the talent you guys have, uh, you guys got to be pretty excited about the potential of what this team could do once you guys go into the outdoor season. Oh, yeah. Outdoors, we are strong. We add some javelin throwers. We add some other events, the four by one. And so we are a much better team outdoors. That's super exciting, and I can't wait to, to hopefully win another one. Best of luck, and we'll look forward to it, and we'll be rooting you on uh, come this Nationals coming up this week. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And that is Michaela Moore with Nebraska Track and Field and a Big Ten champion in the triple jump. This has been a Corn Husker conversation presented by Teammates Mentoring. Be there for a student in your local community by going to teammates.org. Thanks for listening, and as always, make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode right here on the Huskers Radio Network podcast.